as I mentioned in the previous screencast, your students may decide that they really like that trading strategy and that focus on making tens. But in addition, they also know a lot about strategies based on properties of operations at this point, and they may be picking those up even during phase one, which isn't specifically focused on using strategies and patterns, but because your students are getting comfortable with this, it's quite likely that they're going to start noticing those ideas. And we really want that. We certainly don't want them relying on skip counting. For this purpose, the manipulatives that seem to work the best include the Slavonic Abacus. And again, if you don't have the physical copies of the Slavonic Abacus, you and your students can be using a virtual abacus such as that on the Math Learning Center, and they call it the number rack. The doubling strategy, which is based on the associative property, one of the properties of operations, can work really well for any of the even products of eights. So for instance, we can start with two eights, which is 16, and then they can double the two eights to get four eights, and so four eights will be 16 twice, or 32, and then they can double the 32, the 4 eighths becomes 8 eighths, and the 32 becomes 64. This same doubling strategy can work for 6 times 8. Now you have to start with 3 times 8, and then double that. So 3 times 8 is 24, and then 6 times 8 is 48. The distributive property works really nicely for 9 times 8 because students can start by realizing that they already know that 10 eighths is 80, and then taking away that last group of 8, so that now they have 9 groups of 8, and then 80 minus 8 is 72. Of course, this relies on students being able to subtract backwards from a multiple of 10 like 80 and not be too confused by that. That really relies on their ability to know the combinations that make 10, 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8. In this case, because 2 plus 8 is 10, then 80 minus 8 is going to give them the next multiple of 10 lower, 70, plus two more. So those are some things that you might want to work on with some of your students that maybe aren't quite, quite fluent with ways to make 10, is help them build that fluency a little bit, and then they'll, they might be able to subtract away from multiples of 10 a little bit more successfully. So, you may also decide that you want to use uh, unifix cubes or other linking kinds of cubes because they're also a really dynamic manipulative. And in this case of, for instance, seven times eight, your students might think about the idea that they can easily know that seven times 10 is 70. And then just by separating two of the columns in this case, they're going to be able to see that 7 times 8 is 70 taking away 14, and that that will give them a total of 56. Now that's a subtraction approach, and other students may take a slightly different view where they notice that they can split up the 7 times 8 kind of in the row structures, and they're going to see then that 5 eighths is 40, which they learned in goal two, and that two more eighths gives them 16. Now they're adding, and they can see that that makes 56. 
And of course, these are both examples of using the distributive property, which is one of the big properties of operations that Common Core talks about. They can also use the happy hundreds chart. It's not quite as dynamic as the, Sl the Slavonic abacus or the uh, unifix cubes, but it, it can definitely work. So for instance, six times eight, the students might break it up into four visual fields where they're seeing five fives and five threes and then another five and another three. It's a longer approach, but it has some value because this is how they're likely to be thinking about multiplying two digit numbers where they're multiplying the tens by the tens and the tens by the ones and the ones by the tens and the ones by the ones. So in this particular case, they would be able to potentially add up the 25 and the 15 and the five and the three to get 48. Some students might say, well, you know, it's a little bit simpler if we just think of this in two groupings and we already know again that five eighths makes 40 and then we just need to add one more eight to get 48. In addition, you've also got access to the animal strips for goal five. They're the octopus. And the idea here is that, again, they're not quite as dynamic, but the students may be able to see that six fives makes 30, and then they can take the, the six threes. And if they don't know six times three yet, they might see five threes and another three and be able to add all of that to get 48. Another possibility is that students might just notice that they've got five rows of eight on the top of this block and that that's going to give them 40 that they know. And then they just need to add one more eight down at the bottom and that'll give them 48. 